Welcome to Sparks Nevada, uh, site of the Tesla Gigafactory and our Tesla Semi Truck uh, Factory as well. So, uh, yeah, I can't believe it's been five years. Um, so, we, we, we unveiled the Tesla Semi uh, five years ago. Um, it's been a lot that's happened since then, to say the least. Um, so, we were incredibly excited tonight to actually deliver our first production Tesla Semi Trucks. And it's, it's right next door to the uh, uh, Giga Nevada, uh, our Giga factory here, which produces the uh, most number of battery cells in North America. Uh, it produces our, our drive units um, and uh, battery packs. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'd, I'd just like to just start off by giving a, a big hand to the, the Tesla Giga factory team and the Tesla semi truck team. It's like. <laughs> Um, so, I, and I think you've, you've had a chance to tour the production line, so, cool, right? Um, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to actually delivering our first production trucks to uh, PepsiCo, so this is going to be fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and also a huge thank you to all of our other customers, I mean, a lot's happened in the last five years, and our customers have been super loyal and supportive and you know, stuck with us and been a huge part of our development and we're excited to show everything that we've been doing off to everybody tonight. Yep. Great, so let's get started. Yeah, so. Yeah, sorry for the delay. Um, so uh, it's been like <laughs> sheer number, sheer amount of drama between this, this the last that five years ago and now is insane. Um, a lot has happened in the world, but uh, here we are, and it's real, so. Yeah, we threw a great party a few, few years back and uh, trying to do a similar thing here tonight. And you know, Tesla's been growing like crazy. I mean, you know, everybody here has been you know, contributing towards the growth and unveiling awesome products and really scaling us to the point that now we can actually work on Semi, and we're really excited to do that. But, We've been working a little bit on the background, close to the chest, you know, right level of priority, but, you know, made a lot of progress, incorporated a lot of things um, that we're going to talk about. And at the end of the day, we have not wavered from our mission to build the most compelling, greatest Class 8 truck in history. So we're going to keep putting our foot forward to do that. And, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. So uh, you know, people might wonder why build a semi truck, because um, if you look at the actual unit volume, it's it's small compared to passenger vehicles. So for passenger vehicles, you know, there's on the order of uh, almost a hundred million that are sold every year, and whereas uh, semi trucks, it's uh, like you know, for four or five hundred thousand. Not even yeah, it's a couple hundred thousand Class A trucks a year. Globally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or no, no, no. Sorry, that's U.S. US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So it's it's so there's it, in, the, so the, in the U.S. there's it's called like 15 million passenger vehicles and a couple hundred thousand semi trucks. So it seems like a small percentage, but uh, it's actually 20 percent of U.S. vehicle emissions because you've, you've got a huge vehicle and it's being driven uh, all the time. So when you factor in the, the number of hours driven and the, the weight that it's carrying, it's actually, although it's only 1% of vehicle production, it's 20% of vehicle emissions. Uh, and it's uh, over a third of, of all the particulate emissions. So from a sort of health standpoint, particularly in like cities, this is a huge uh, impact, like it's gigantic. So um, that's why we're doing it, you know? So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, this is, this is really core to our mission, and you know, to, to Elon's point, there's a lot of heavy trucks that are deployed in dense urban areas, and so the communities that are around freeways, a lot of where these trucks are domiciled, are going to really benefit, particularly from the particulate emissions reductions, and then you know, just trying to reduce emissions globally. Every truck that we put on the road that replaces a diesel truck is a huge amount of leverage, and so that's, that is why we're doing this, and makes a huge difference towards driving us towards our total mission of sustainable energy and transportation. Yeah, I think maybe a lot of people don't realize it's actually quite, like you know quite unhealthy to be living next to a highway with with diesel trucks. FYI, <laughs> so um, so being able to make them electric is just going to be uh, just in, in addition to sort of climate change and and uh, global warming matters. Um, it's it's also quiet and it's it's going to improve the quality of your air and it will actually just fundamentally improve the health of people living near freeways, which is obviously a super big deal. So yeah, if anybody's been woken up at a, a noisy truck delivering in the morning, you know the the quiet will definitely be very welcome. I, I know I will appreciate that. Yeah. So. Um, so we're aiming to cover all ma all major forms of transport. Uh, it's just consistent with the Tesla mission because sometimes they get asked like, well, you know, shouldn't a Tesla just produced like, uh, you know, fast cars or, or premium cars or whatever. It, it's like, but, but what's our actual mission? Our actual mission is to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. So um, that's why we're making this wide range of cars that don't really make sense from a brand standpoint, I guess, traditionally, but they make total sense when you consider what's the mission of the company. The mission of the company is to accelerate sustainable energy, and so it's, it's super consistent with that goal, um, and uh, really a, a crucial piece of the puzzle, and, and that's why we're doing it. Yeah, and I mean, Elon, you first laid this out in Master Plan Part 2, and you know, now we're here to actually make it happen, and you know, everything from the mission side, along with reducing the cost of cargo transport, and also make it fun. I mean, we want to make the truck an awesome driving experience, you know, make it kick ass for the drivers. Yeah, I mean, it, lo it looks sick. I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> I mean, you want to drive that. I mean, that thing looks like it came from the future. It, I mean, it, it drives like a, it, like, it's like driving a, you know, a, a Tesla, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, it's fun, it looks awesome. And you know, there's, there's, there's actually a big shortage of drivers. And so if you're a, a truck driver and you want the, the most badass rig on the road, this is it. So. So. Yeah, that's it. It's a beast. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, at Tesla, we don't make slow cars. Uh, we don't make this, this thing has crazy power relative to a, a, a diesel truck. Uh, I mean, actually, especially if you if you don't have, if you're not towing anything, you could zip around like it, it looks crazy. Basically, it looks like a elephant moving like a cheetah. It just didn't look right, frankly. Um, but it's uh, it, it's this is this is not sluggish in the least. It's it's fast. Uh, it's fast to accelerate. It's it's uh, fast to brake. It's really a step change improvement in uh, what it's like to drive a semi truck. Um, yeah, when we've got three yeah. times the power. Three times the power than any diesel truck on the road right now. So you've got all the work, all the power you need to get the job done. But the other reason that it's a beast is because it's also efficient. And you, know, you can go 500 miles on a single charge on one of these things. So it's the mix of those two that this is why this is a game changer. And what's awesome is both of those are enabled by our new 1,000 volt powertrain, which is the first vehicle that we're doing with that. And don't worry, there'll be some more things, more vehicles coming with that. But uh, this is going to be 
uh, a game changer because of all the awesome innovations that have happened you know, behind the scenes and you know, under the hood, so to speak. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So we're obviously leveraging, leveraging a ton of stuff that we've already done. So we've got, uh, well, it's not probably 51 billion miles driven. I don't know. It's more every, every day. Um, so we're, we're using our existing drive units, power electronics, uh, infotainment, uh, the, our super efficient uh, heat pump uh, HVAC system, uh, and uh, state-of-the-art inverters. So we're able to leverage uh, the existing uh, powertrain and uh, elements that are already made at volume uh, in order to uh, achieve ex extreme efficiency of, of cost and ca uh, capability. So. Yeah, and it also means we get to leverage all the reliability that the active car fleet is doing. So we're accumulating all these miles, getting a ton of demonstrated learnings into the field. And we're going to go and put all these trucks into the, the world and get a lot of learnings as well. But we're coming off of a great launching pad with everything that's done in the rest of our products already. And it's also enabled because you know, Tesla's got this full vertical integration on the software and the hardware side. So the teams that are working together to put all that together into one package, this is a huge win you know, for all of our products, but particularly Semi. Uh, lots of hardcore testing. So, I mean, one of the things about a, a commercial truck is that the reliability has to be extremely high. So it's got to, got to be running continuously, can't break down. Uh, it's got to handle every kind of weather. Uh, uptime is, is super important for any kind of semi-truck. So we've, we've tested durability in every kind of weather, every kind of environment. Um, I mean, you could, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, so even just, we've driven Donner. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. but. We've been through hot, cold, snow, rain. We've been putting this thing through all its paces in the lab as well as in the real world. You know, the simulation team has been doing an incredible job of being able to scale all of that you know, in the uh, virtual side. And the other thing is that we're going to take these and we're going to put our money where our mouth is. And we're going to put these on into our own fleet, into our own supply chain. And we're going to use this to transport goods between our factories and our suppliers because we believe in it, not just from a mission perspective and a cost perspective, but because we want to close that feedback loop. We got to get that learning as fast as we can. We want it straight from the drivers, we want it straight from the service techs that are working on it. We're going to take all that data that's coming in and continue to refine the product and make it better, just like we do on the car side. Yeah, exactly. So to be clear, like we're, these semi trucks are, are running 24 seven between our, uh, Sparks, uh, technically in Sparks, not Reno, but uh, most people will think of it as Reno, Reno, Reno Spox, uh, and, and Tahoe. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is technically the, uh, called the Tahoe Reno Industrial Complex, or TRIC. Um, now there's an in interesting backstory about uh, why it's called that. Very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, it's, it's, it's the, the Tesla using the trucks continuously day and night uh, between um, here and Fremont and, and back again uh, is, is going to be uh, it is an, a great test of the vehicle uh, and will give us a great feedback loop for continuing to improve the product. So my click is sort of not working. There we go. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, we've got a tri-motor yeah. uh, powertrain system. So and they're we're using the. Uh, Cobno wrap sleeve. So essentially, we're using the the, the, the plaid uh, Model S, Model X uh, powertrain, uh, and um, but it, we're, we're and, and, and actually enabling the two of the drive units to actually disconnect, uh, yeah. so that they're not uh, free spinning. Uh, so yeah. the efficiency is actually much greater in cruise. Yeah, this is really unique. I mean, we're going with a tri-motor system. One of them is constantly engaged, so that's for maximum efficiency. You're getting on a highway, that's doing the bulk of the work, and it's operating at the peak efficiency point of the entire drivetrain. And then the other two units are for torque and acceleration. So when the driver needs it to get their job done, whether that's you know, getting out of a loading dock or it's on the road they need to pass somebody, you're tackling a grade, you have the torque and power to do it. And the cool thing is that these are clutched automatically, so no driver input needed, but it's also seamless. So the highway efficiency unit is cruising along, doing its thing, and if the driver puts their foot to the floor, the torque unit spin up, clutch engages, and takes over, and it does all of that before we've maxed out the torque on the efficiency unit, so it's completely smooth. There's no turbo lag or jerkiness or anything like that. No driver input needed. It's smooth, both in terms of acceleration and deceleration for regen. It's uh, 
really cool happening all behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, what I find actually really wild about this is that uh, you can have a, a truck um, which is 82,000 pounds, and uh, by the way, the re reason we can actually do 82,000 pounds is that there's a 2,000 pound extra uh, that's allowed by law for electric trucks. So you get a little bit of an uh, advantage on the, uh, on the, on the weight side. Um, but you can, you can basically pull 82,000 uh, pounds uh, on, at cruise using, and the only thing that's doing that is a tiny little motor so on one axle. It's about that big, about a football size maybe. Yeah, yeah you can else. carry it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like a, you know, I mean, You, you can check it in your luggage. Good luck that, doing that with a diesel engine. And one of those is more powerful than a diesel. Yeah. Yeah, just that, just that one little guy is, is more powerful than a regular diesel engine on, on a, on a semi-truck. Um, but it's just, I find it like amazing that this enormous thing can be pulled by something that you could carry in your hands. It's like, wow, that's power density. Yep. Yeah. So. so yeah, and then in terms of, you know, we're putting this to use in the real world. Yeah. So that, that truck's clocking it at 82. That, that's weighing 82,000 pounds. And when you see that pass shot again, you'll notice, you'll notice that speedometer is climbing. You know, we're going 6% and accelerating up that grade. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is where it comes in. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, not, it's like driving a, a normal car, not like driving a truck. Um, you, it's just that you're, you're moving 82,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and, a, a, any highway grade you come across, you can tackle at speed. Yeah. You know, there's no compromise. No slowdown. Nope. And the other beauty is that you've got all this power going up, but you also have it going down. And what that means is you've got regenerative braking. So rather than using a jake brake or engine braking like a diesel truck does, where you have to worry about hitting your shifts. If you miss a gear, you're onto your brakes and potentially in a runway situation. You don't have to worry about any of that. There's no shifting, no nothing. And so the regen recaptures all that energy as you're going down these grades. But on top of it, it also is a safer system for not just the driver, but everybody on the road because there's no gear to miss. Yeah. I mean, it just it's worth reemphasizing that point. Um, because it's an electric uh, drivetrain, when it goes downhill, you actually, or when you slow down, it recaptures um, the energy of motion or the energy of, 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 of height. The, the potential and kinetic energy are largely recaptured. Uh, whereas for a diesel truck, that's not possible. You can't just you know, create diesel. So it, it, you just end up heating brakes. And, and then your brakes overheat, and you can't use them. And then it, it's actually quite, it's pretty dangerous because the brakes stop working. Yeah, that's why you have runaway truck ramps. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because, so if for any of you that have ever driven I-80 and driven Donner, there's a mandatory brake check stop for trucks down by Emigrant Gap. We've done this. And it's really funny because we'll go over the, the grade, we'll come down, and we just kind of pull to the side and we're like, well, there's nothing to check. We've never used the things. And we just keep driving. Yeah. Yeah. And we get to the bottom of the hill, we have cold brakes. Yeah. <laughs> That's like mind-blowing in, in the trucking world. So it's like insane, basically. Uh, and, and you, yeah, so. Uh. So it's, it's really worth emphasizing that. That's a significant safety improvement for the truck driver and for other people on the road. Um, and and the, we, we also have um, excellent traction control because the precision of an electric motor is vastly better than a, a diesel engine. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of got like the, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the right analogy here, but like it's got the precision of like a laser printer. <laughs> it's not great. It's, it's like really precise. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, so, and and the, the reaction is, uh, uh, so it's like you don't have to worry about, uh, tra tra like traction control is awesome. It's got, uh, it's automatically stopping the, the, the truck from jackknifing. It's doing all this safety stuff uh, in the background that just isn't possible with uh, regular diesel trucks. It's just, it's, it's, it's a step change in technology in, 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 in so many ways. Um, yeah, and the tight integration with the software team that we have here really makes that happen because it means that we can take all that, uh, the precision, and actually put it to use. You know, it's not some tie-in of some third-party powertrain. No, this is all in-house. And so we do this really neat, uh, you know, chassis control work at the brake level, the traction control level. We integrate with our uh, total stability control system and make sure that the driver, you know, has a lot of confidence but also has everything they need to stay on the road. It's going to be, a, it's a really nice... T, uh, neat integrated uh, package overall in terms of you know software and control and it's totally seamless to the driver and it'll be a, a game changer in terms of safety. Yeah. yeah.
So we talk power, you wanna talk efficiency? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, some people out there say it can't be done. Um, I don't know who might say that, but uh, <laughs> I've heard rumors. Um, and uh, so we just did it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and we're going to post the whole video unedited on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no jump cuts. <laughs> yeah. And th this wasn't, you know, some ultra clean, precise test track simulation or something where we, you know, shut down a road. Nope. This is real world. You know, this is over grapevine. This is with traffic. This is true 500 miles. You know, we were loaded just under 82K. You know, we didn't, no special aero treatments. Yeah. Truck came off the line, shook it down, made it run. That's it. Yeah, there was like no fast moves here. Nope. So to be clear, it's not like, oh, and what, what, did, what tricks did they pull? Were well, there actually a whole bunch of tricks we could have pulled yeah. and didn't. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, you know, like, as Dan said, like no, no special aero treatment. Uh, the, oh, and by the way, we should mention there was yeah. no charging. Like, we, we charged yeah, the yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah, we didn't stop the charge. Single, yes. single driver one shift. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Minor detail. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's not like 500 miles, like, with no load, with special aero and special everything. It's, like, fully loaded go, going from the Bay Area. We actually had to, like, go a bit north to get to, you know, actually add to get to 500 miles because, you, you know, uh, L.A. to the Bay Area is less than that. Well, we went all the way to San Diego here. So we, we, oh, okay, we, that's, we stretched yeah. out on the southern end. And, uh, I mean, do you want to see on the video? I mean, yeah, we, yeah. we have the proof. Absolutely. So... It's only eight hours long, so. Yeah, yeah buckle in. <laughs> Don't worry, we brought lots of snacks. Yeah. But yeah. Standard trip. Down the five, up grapevine, through LA, traffic, construction. You know, we got the bypass on the way station, but you know, running full 80, or just under 82, full deliveries, nothing to hide. Yeah, real, real world, real, it's, yeah. He, he did take one restroom break for, there, there is a required mandatory 30 minute break within the first eight hours of operation. Okay. Took a small restroom break, but that was it. Yep. All right. Cool. So aerodynamic efficiency obviously matters a lot. And you can see it's, it's uh, shaped like a bullet. It's really aerodynamic. Um, and uh, that, that helps a lot. Uh, so we get uh, less than two kilowatt uh, hours. Two per kilowatt mile. hours a mile. Yep. So and, and that's the name of the game yeah. is efficiency there. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's really efficient uh, in every way. And uh, I mean, the team's done a lot of awesome work. I mean, we, yes. we went into the wind tunnel um, with this really cool model, rolling road, the whole nine yards and pulled in a lot of the learnings and all of our features from the car side that you know, give us such great real world efficiency there. And really wanna make sure that the, you know, the truck and the trailer have to work together. You know, this is a combination, this is not just the truck. If you optimize one, you actually might disrupt the whole combination. And so we spent a lot of time both you know, virtually but also in the wind tunnel to make this happen and really some next level engineering to, uh, of everything they had to do there. And you know, it means that we've got a really efficient truck. Yeah. So. As I said, it's, uh, it's as easy to drive as a Model 3. So it's like, uh, like, with basically no training, you can drive this. Um, you know, you have to think bigger when you're driving it. <laughs> uh, but it's not like, uh, it's not hard to drive. It's really easy. And we put the center, it put the seat in the center for max visibility, low floor, you can stand up in the cabin. Yeah, and that's actually like a really big deal. I mean, and, I mean, you're a tall guy, Elon, like yeah. you're able to stand up just fine. And you know, the nice thing is, is that if you're a truck driver and you're out during the day and it's, you know, it's cold, it's snowy, whatever, you can get in and you, well, this isn't a sleeper cab, this is a day cab. You can still stand up and you can you know, shed your jacket, put it on the wall, all in the comfort. You can put your coveralls on while in the cab. So if you have to go do a dirty job, you can do that comfortably as opposed to being out in the elements. So that's, you know, that level of space is you know, unheard of. And we were able to do that with some pretty innovative packaging. And on top of it, there's plenty of cargo storage, you know, for drivers that need to bring any tools, other equipment along, and not to mention, you know, We've got the plugins, the wireless charging, everything they need on the uh, electronic side as well. Yep.
Yeah, so I've got efficiency in, in every aspect of the vehicle. Uh, I've got one touch, a suspension dump, so you can, it's very easy to uh, attach to the trailer. Um, it, it saves time and money. It's, uh, the fleet's more efficient, and the driver's home sooner. Yeah, I mean, it, really, we're trying to extend the idea of this efficiency from not just while you're on the road, but into the yard as well. That's before and after you know, the truck has done its job on the road. Because that means that you know, drivers at the end of the day are spending less time at the yard and they're getting home earlier and it makes their lives easier. You know, we've got a light test that's easy to execute, helps with compliance. There's all these little things that uh, the design team really spent their time you know, researching. They did ride-alongs, they studied, they did all this work. It's really cool to watch them put, I mean, I think they even took like a bunch of like the various cups and put them in CAD and you'll see them like put them in various cup holder sizes and places. They'll like uh, mock up a bag. They'll do all kinds of neat stuff to understand how a driver works throughout the day and uh, it means that they'll have a more efficient uh, experience overall. Yeah. Right. Obviously to charge a, a truck like this quickly, you need a high power charger, so we developed a megawatt class charger as it's capable of charging at a megawatt to DC. Yeah. Um, and it's our next generation immersive cooling, so it's, it's liquid cooled. Uh, so you don't need like a gigantic elephant trunk of a cable. You can actually have a small small cable, and that cable delivers uh, a megawatt. Um, and uh, yeah, we've th three x the current density. I mean, this is really cool stuff. I mean, we took you're actually immersing the conductor in the coolant, this water-based coolant that we have, and we're then doing some really neat isolation monitoring on the back end to ensure that it's safe and delivering that it needs to. But it means that we can really shove a lot of current in a very, very small place. So you know, for those that have worked uh, and charged their cars on a V3 supercharger and the cable's nice and you know, maneuverable, it's the same thing here, but now we're just shoving a megawatt through it instead. So you know, this is key for high power applications like Semi, but you wanna tell them or do you want me to tell them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, gonna be used for Cybertruck too. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is coming to our superchargers uh, next year. Yeah. Yeah. So. so the future of transport obviously requires a sustainable energy infrastructure. So you've got to have all all aspects of the of the energy question answered. Uh, sustainable power generation. Uh, then you've got to store the power, and then you transfer the power to the vehicle. So the, like the three pillars of a sustainable energy future are sustainable power generation uh, with uh, solar and wind. Uh, I'm actually a fan of nuclear, um, <laughs> which we should support. <laughs> um, and and uh, geothermal and many others. But things that are sustainable uh, long term, we, we, uh, you, you, but, but things like wind and solar are intermittent, so you have to have the battery pack to store the energy so when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, you still have energy. And you can also buffer the power so you're not overloading the grid with spike loads. Yeah, and our semi-customers are actively deploying this today. And you know, we're working with them so that they have a the pathway to get towards 100% you know, sustainable future. You know, but we have all of this at our disposal, you know, commercial solar and Megapack. And you know, the Megapack is great because not only can it do things like peak shaving or some of the other uh, energy modulation, but it also provides a form of redundancy and backup. I mean, if we're going to ask you know, a fleet to take on these trucks and run them, they need to ensure that they're going to be able to charge them and keep their fleet running even in the amount of power outage. And that's one of the things that we can do with the Megapack on site as well. So, and, and first deliveries are now. Yeah. And so, I'd, uh, we'd just like to, to thank uh, PepsiCo. Uh, they've been a great partner. Uh, hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Um, so, yeah, we, we completed our first uh, cargo run with a, a very enormous amount of Frito-Lays, uh, which I th I'm sure we have a lot of them here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yesterday, we were actually able to complete our first delivery, compliments of Frito-Lay. 
uh, we took a truck down to their Modesto factory from here, and one of their drivers, we delivered the truck, they took it over, and they brought back uh, a load of snacks for everybody here to enjoy tonight. Yep. So, big thanks to Kirk and Steven. Yeah. Do you guys, guys want to say anything? Yes. Okay. All right. Look, nothing like this happens without amazing people. And so I just want to thank the people that spent countless hours to make this a reality. That's it. The people. Yeah. That's it. I, I just want to echo. I know a lot of work went into it, and this is fantastic. We're thrilled. Uh, about the delivery today, so thank you. Yeah, thanks for letting us be a part of this. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's it's been a long five long journey, a long f five years, uh, but uh, th this is going to really revolutionize the roads and I think make the world a better place in a, in a meaningful way. Um, so thank you for your support uh, through all the years.